Hello everyone. Welcome back to this channel. In last video we have talked about VMSs and we also created VMSs on a Zor portal. In this video we'll see how to do auto scaling in VMSs. So you can just go to this one or you can search VMSs from here. Click on create. So from here you can select the subscription and then you can select any resource group that you had already created. If you want to create a new resource group, you can just select this one and type the name of your resource group. Then you can just pass the name of your virtual machine skill set that you want to create. For now, I'll just create VMSS server. You can select the region from this drop down and also availability zone. Right now, I don't want to choose any availability zones, so I'll just keep it as none. And then from here, you can choose the orchestration mode. If you don't know about all these things, then you can just refer the older video, the part one video of VMSS or VM. I am going with uniform mode, right? And then you can just select the scaling mode from here. If you are creating the VMSS for the first time in your subscription, then maybe auto scaling option is not enabled for you. For that, you need to enable a resource provider. So you can just go to your subscriptions. Let's go to home. And from here, you can select the subscriptions. And whatever subscription you are using, you can select that. And then you need to go to settings. In setting, just click on resource providers. In this resource provider, you can register the Microsoft.insight as a resource provider. So I'll click on this one. So you can just select this one and register it from here. So it is already registered for me. I'll do nothing and I'll go back. So in, when you will click on auto scaling, some auto scaling configuration will be added by default for you. But you can change those configuration. You just need to click on configure. And from here, you can either add your own scaling conditions or just see the default condition. You can also change the default condition. So I'll click on this pencil icon. From here, we can edit the condition. So I want to go with the auto scaling mode. I don't want to do anything manual. So I'll go with auto scaling. This scaling will be done on the basis of any CPU metric or any schedule. So either you can select the CPU metric for auto scaling or you can define any schedule so that in that particular time your VMs can scale up or scale down. For now, I am keeping the default instances count as two. That means two VMs will be created when the VMS, VMSs will be created for me. The instance limit is minimum two and maximum of 20. Scale out condition is 80% of CPU threshold. That means when the CPU utilization is greater than 80%, then increase the instance count by one. And the scale-in condition is whenever the CPU threshold is less than 20%, so decrease the instance count by 1. You can even change these conditions. I am just making it as 60%. And scale-in condition looks good to me, so I will go with that. Now, the last option is query duration. That means if the CPU utilization is more than 80% for 10 minutes, then only a new VM will get created. So query duration is basically the engine will query CPU uses for the past 10 minutes. For now, I want to make it as 4 minutes, let's say, which is not possible. The query duration must be between 5 and 720. So I'll make it as 5. And you can just click on save. And you can also add a new scaling condition. So you need to provide the name of that scaling condition and then just select all those options. And you can also select the time zone here. So you can schedule uh, the scale up and scale down of instances on the basis of time. So we don't want to do that as of now. So I have just uh, cancelled that. Here we, you can enable the predictive auto scale, which we are not going to do. And then you can also enable the log. Uh, then you can just click on save. Now you can also select the image that you want to use from the drop down. I am going with the default image. I am also going with the default size with one virtual CPU and one gigabyte of memory. I'll go with password for the authentication type to make it straightforward. But the best practice is to use SSH keys. Uh, you can provide any password. The username and password is OK. And we'll go to the next step. I don't want to enable spot instances for now. So we'll go to disk. I'm going with the default configuration for disk. I don't want to enable the encryption at host. You can go with default disk size or you can provide your own disk size. It's up to you. You can also select different OS disk type. So I will go with the standard SSD and then you can select your key management. So I'll go with platform managed key, not the customer managed key. So you can also provide your own key, which is known as customer managed key. Then go to networking. 
so it will create a new network for me or you can select your existing network then you can select a network interface or create a new one so i'll go with this one and i'll try to change few things here so you can see the new virtual network will be created and a default subnet will be assigned the network security group is basic the public inbound port is not enabled i won't look into that vm i'll allow some selected ports so let's enable http https and ssh though i'll not need http https for now but i have enabled it you can also enable public ip address or disable it so when you when you will enable the public ip address that means public ip address will be assigned to your virtual machines if you will disable it that means no public ip address will be assigned to your virtual machine only private ip address will be assigned click on okay and then just select it uh for load balancing options let's go with none because i haven't taught you about load balancer so we'll go with none you don't need all these things as of now so i'll just go to review and create option so validation has been passed let's just click on create so the deployment has been done we can just go to the resource and inside the vmssrg you can see all the resources has been created like virtual network network security groups and the vmss and inside vmss you are seeing that two out of two has been succeeded that means two instances are running right now let's go to the availability and scaling options so inside availability and scale option click on scaling so you can auto scale the instances on the basis of two things that is either on schedule or on the basis of metrics like cpu utilization so we are going with default and you can see the settings here right here so the rules option is scale out that means increase the number of vms when the average cpu per percentage is greater than 60 then increase the count by 1 and when vms server percentage cpu utilization is less than 20 then decrease the count by 1 and this is the minimum maximum and default number of instances right so you can also add scaling condition from here as well even after creating the vms right so to see the auto scaling feature we'll go back to the instances and we will try to log into each instance and try to create some stress on the vms so that the cpu utilization get greater than 60% and more number of vms will get created so let's click on the server i will copy the public ip address and we'll try to log in to the virtual machine so if you are going to use windows you can just select git bash or if you are using ubuntu machine or linux server you can just use terminal and even for mac you can use the terminal so i'll click ssh you need to pass your username and then your public ip address so yeah i want to log into the virtual machine pass your password i think i had passed the wrong password so yeah we are we have logged in and using top command you can see the cpu utilization so you can see from here the cpu utilization is very low so we need to increase the cpu utilization somehow so i'll do control c so there is a command that you can use so use this command i want to run this command in background so i'll just click okay and again i'll check the cpu utilization so you can see this is the process id and now the cpu utilization is more than 99% that's what we want similarly we'll try to do a very similar thing for the next vm to make sure our cpu utilization is more than uh, 60% so i'll go back and uh, this is not necessary you don't need to have this kind of a stress on, on each and every vm so let's get back and just paste the ip address public ip address so are you sure you want to continue connecting yes i want so we are in and using top command you can see the cpu utilization of this particular vm is still very low so i'll just run the same command again let's keep it running for 5 minutes straight 
and then we will go back and check whether the number of instances is getting increased or not. We have set the query time as 5 minutes so we need to wait for 5 minutes to check whether the number of VM instances is getting increased or not when the stress or when the CPU utilization has been increased. Yeah, it's been more than 5 minutes. Uh, so now you can see the creation of new VM has started. So after every 5 minutes of stress, it will try to create a new virtual machine. Now it is running. You can see now it is running. So that's how auto scaling works. If you want to see whether it will decrease the number of instances or not, when we'll decrease the stress on the virtual machines. So let's try to stop the command so that the stress on virtual machine will decrease below 20% and then we will see whether it is trying to delete those VMs or not. So let's get back. So this is our process ID. Just copy this process ID. Use kill command to kill this process ID so that this command will stop. So it has been stopped and when you will just type top again, you will see that that command is not running right now and the stress on CPU has been very low, right? So we'll go back to different VM as well and uh, do the similar thing here as well. So for that, you need to get back. So I have done control C and then just to kill hyphen nine for the first one, that is one at one six. And similarly, you can kill another one that is one at one seven, right? So both has been killed and both has been stopped. Uh, we can check it again using top command. So you can see the CPU utilization has been in, has been decreased and it's very less, right? So let's wait for five more minutes and we'll check after five minutes whether those virtual machines has are getting deleted or not. So it's still creating some VMs because the stress was around 10 minutes. So that's why it's still creating new VMs. But you can see after some time it will automatically delete one of those. So this one is also running. So after some time, after waiting long enough, you can see that it is trying to delete a VM. So that's how scale in and scale out works in VMSs. And that's why VMSs is very important when you have flexible traffic. VMSs will handle the deletion and creation of new VMs according to traffic for you. Let it refresh. So yeah, it has been deleted. And after some time, it will also try to delete one of those VMs. So yeah, that was all for this video. You can go back and now delete your resource group. We'll try to delete our resource group right here. So just click on delete and copy this and apply force deletion because we don't want it anymore.